if you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta, transformational shaman, spiritual coach. And I am here as always with my friend Joshua Radawan, who is an amazing spiritual coach as well and who specializes in working with people in the paranormal industry. And so, you know, today, today I want to, today we're going to talk about is your magic failing because your inner work is on vacation? And before we get into that, we actually have a listener question. And so I wanted to answer it. She, she sent it to my email. And then the email she gave me to respond to was not valid. So I'm answering it here, Lynette. I hope that hope works for you. And so this, this is a question from Lynette. So Josh, you want to read that? Yeah, she said, uh, this is what she sent in. She said, hello, if I gave someone consent to access my energy and then I tell them that I deny it, are they required to remove themselves from my energy based on spiritual law? Yeah, so the answer to this is yes and no. And so we're going to, so the way that the question is phrased, which is, are they required to remove themselves from my field, which is giving them the power, right? By spiritual law. Well, there are no spiritual laws around this. Let me just start with that. And the, the nature of the, the situation for you right now is that when you phrase it like that and you say they have to remove themselves from your energy field, then you are in the victim space and they are in the power position. And so by that rule, no, they don't have to do anything they don't want to do, right? Because you have handed over your power to them and you've handed over the ability to make that decision to them. Now, if you have given permission and you revoke it and you know with your whole being that you are the only person who has the right to your energy field at any time, no matter what, and everything else must vacate the premises and you know yourself to be the biggest bad in the room, as in anything that says, I don't want to leave, you go leave or die, right? And you can find, you, you know, you can back that up then. Yeah. By spiritual law, everything will vacate because you are sovereign over your own beingness. And so it was a complicated question because of, it, it depends on where you are. Now, if you have invited somebody in and have now changed your mind and are having a hard time getting out of that victim space, that would be a good time to book a call with us because you know we can do some work with you on that and help you to get that to happen. And you know you can book, I think I have, on my website, I think it's called a, I don't know, what is it called? What's it called? I think it's, it's a general, it's a general session. Yeah, I can't find it in here, but I'll, I'll put a link to it in the, in the show notes, but it's, it's basically you want a healing session. And so that's, you know, whatever the general session name is, it's been a while since I've talked about it. <laughs> so I forget what I called it. So you can tell I'm really like hardcore on this selling shit, right? <laughs> can't even remember the name yeah but if you book a session you will get some help and i can make that happen for you so yes there's that and if you're curious about how to get to that sovereign place right because that that is the ultimate goal is to not have to hire somebody to help you right that's that's the goal is you want to be able to do all this stuff yourself and take care of yourself and make it all go right and so the, you know, to do that, you have to do a certain amount of work on yourself and with your, uh, energy field and things like that. So we're going to actually talk about that today. So that's a great segue back into our topic. So thank you for that, Lynette. <laughs> thank you for your question. And if anybody else has any other questions, I'm happy to answer them on the air. Or you can email me in private if you want to do that too. You can email me at kelly at kellysparta.com and I'm happy to answer your emails. And so we're talking today about is your magic failing because your inner work is on vacation. And so this is, this is one of those things. We talk all the time about 
how to do your spiritual work, how to do your inner work, blah, 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 blah. But the thing that happens, and this happens a lot, is when people are new to this work, especially post pandemic, right? During the pandemic, everybody was like, ah, I want to do my inner work. But post pandemic, everybody's like, ah, oh, I just want to play with the magic. I'm burned out, right? And so we have a lot of people come in and they, they're like, ah, oh, I just want to learn the magic. And then the magic stalls. And the magic stalls because they're not doing the inner work. And here's, here's how this works, right? So if you are doing your magic, okay, you're going to say, oh, oh, maybe I can do this and maybe I can do that. And then you're going to get a few things done and things are going to work and you're going to scare yourself because this is what happens all the time in manifestation too. And Josh knows this one. It's like sure you manifest do. something, you freak out and then you're like, what? I'm powerful. What does that mean? I don't understand. Right? You were going to say something, Josh. Go ahead. Oh, I mean, that's happened so many times to, to me on the on the path, especially in the beginning. You know, it's like, whoa, this is really real. But, you know, it, it did take a while to get there, you know, to, to be able to manifest in that way. You know, it was it's like what you're talking about, you know, getting rid of a lot of those limiting belief structures that you can't. But some of that is really dug into the subconscious. And that's kind of what we do is we, you know, we, we go in a little bit deeper so we can we can get you to that place where you can really start, you know, feeling that magic, seeing that magic in, in your world. So, yeah, we harvest those potatoes of magic. <laughs> the magic potatoes. Sorry, I just watched somebody like harvesting potatoes on their TikTok channel, and I was like, oh, I want to be digging in the dirt and pulling the potatoes out because that's kind of what I love to do in life. I'm, I'm a Scorpio with a Cancer moon. I love to go into the muck and the mud and love you like a mother until you're until you come out the other side. It's my thing. It's my jam. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. So. <laughs> So, yeah, I don't know how we got off on that tangent, but there we are. We're there. And so back again. Okay, so here's the deal. When you start with the magic, there are certain things that will, you will be able to do, and they will come fairly easily. And it's, it's almost like spirit gives you a gimme, right? They give you a gimme in the beginning to sort of help you believe it. And so like you'll manifest something just as you're getting started. Now, if you've tried to manifest and it's not working for you right now, that's okay. I'm not talking about the moment you get started on it. I'm talking about the moment you really commit to the path sort of thing, right? And so, you know, typically in, in manifestation is where I see this the most is that somebody will manifest something big, they'll freak them out and then they'll never try and manifest anything ever again. <laughs> It's like they proved to themselves that it worked and scared the crap out of themselves at the same time, right? And so the, that's why it is so important to do your inner work at the same time as you work on your magic. Because your magic is not going to expand if you don't address the limiting beliefs that are keeping it small. Your magic is not going to expand if you don't address the fear of your own power. Your magic is not going to expand if you don't break open your blocks to receiving. Your magic isn't going to expand if you don't look at the way you're taking responsibility for the messages you're bringing through, right? There's, there's all sorts of ways in which your magic just gets stuck because you're not doing your inner work, right? This is the reason why on the Welcome to the Woo program and the Woo Squared program, we actually integrate both the magic and the personal growth work because one, they don't work without each other, right? So you can try and do your inner work as well. And there's a lot of programs that do personal growth work, right? And, and so personal growth work is, it, it comes in two forms, right? So there's the, the skill building side where you are working on, you know, when I get upset, this is how I manage my anger. When I, you know, if I want to talk to somebody, here are the skills to have nonviolent communication. Here's all the, you know, blah, 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 right? All the different pieces and parts there. Those are skill building. And then there are more perspective shifting spaces, right? And so perspective shifting is about seeing things differently. It's like, oh, this person yelled at me. I, I must be a terrible person, 
right? Or I'm, I must be wrong in some way. Well, okay. Or, oh, this person yelled at me. Wow, they must be having a bad day. That doesn't really have anything to do with me, right? Those are same experience, two completely different reactions. 90% of life or 10% of life is what happens to you. 90% is what you make it mean and how you react, right? And so, you know, perspective shift is huge for, for changing your experience, right? Skill building will not change your experience of life except as a result of the reactions you get to your different actions, right? It will not change the inner assumptions that you make. Perspective shifting will do that. And perspective shifting, skill building, and energy work to help you with the energetic side of all the stuff will create true transformation. That's where identity shift happens. That's where we start to, to step into a new belief about ourselves and who we believe ourselves to be. So when you put all three together, you are literally on the express train to being a happier, healthier you, right? And a more magical you, because when you can believe yourself to be powerful and have it not mean that you are a target, right? When you can be seen and have it not mean you are a target. <laughs> when you are able to, to hold in stillness without having your brain go blah, and then you can provide focus for what you're doing, you become more powerful, right? When you can practice and some of this is practice right when you can practice enough you can do things very quickly and without any extra sympathetic magic elements or spell work or anything like that you know i i have a woman that i follow on tiktok she's she's called the abstract witch and she's a witch and so she's doing witchy spells and stuff and i've seen them and i'm like yeah those are good spells mm, i wouldn't do them right <laughs> because i would just go boom this and I wouldn't worry about it. And, you know, she's probably capable of doing that too, because she's been doing this a long time, but you know, she's still doing her spells because that's her comfort. That's what she likes. Right. Um, and you know, as I said, I follow her cause she's, she's good. Yeah. So the, the thing that you have to keep in mind is that with practice comes, it, it's not practice makes perfect. Okay. I want to be really clear. This isn't like playing the piano or something like that, where you do your 10,000 hours and you master it and blah, blah, blah. I mean, to a certain extent, yes, there's skill building around the, the energetics and how you do your focus and stuff like that, that, that does apply to that. However, more importantly is the more you practice, the more you prove to yourself that you're not bullshitting yourself, that you can actually do this, right? The more proof you get from your practice, the more you believe and the more you believe, the more you can achieve in your readings, in your psychic abilities, in your everything. Right. And the, the, that's the key. And most people are desperately afraid to open their mouths. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to give you the gift that was that, that I accidentally gave myself when I, on the day that I proved to myself, I was psychic. And that is say, I'm going to give you a reading and we're going to start with the assumption that absolutely everything I say to you is probably wrong and get the other person to agree to that. And then you give yourself full freedom to say whatever comes to mind because you've already said, Hey, it's probably wrong, right? That is the easiest way to get over this mental block of, I have to be right. I have to be perfect. I can't get it wrong. I can't say the wrong thing. La 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 la. You know, just do practice sessions and say, it's probably all wrong. <laughs> and, and then shock the crap out of yourself with how much it isn't wrong. Right. That's the goal. So, all right. So with that, Josh, I've been sort of monologuing. I'm going to, I'm going to give space to you. To no, say some stuff. <laughs> I mean, like you're so, I mean, the, the, the welcome to the woo program is your baby. Right. And I, I just want to share my experience with it, you know, because I, I think it's important. You know, I, I came into this work, um, in, in 2020. Right. And, you know, I had, I'd gone through a very rough spiritual awakening and I manifested Kelly, right? Like I manifested this, this program because I was like, Hey, I, I, I'm having all this magical shit happen and I have done zero inner work and I am debilitated by fear. Right. Like, I mean, I was in the energetic fetal position for probably about six months and I was in really rough shape. And my 
Spotify just happened to open up to what is a shaman. And interestingly enough, that's what had been coming through on my radar for six months, you know. Um, and, you know, it was through that work, though, the, the, the going after the anxiety, the worry, the fear, the dread, and being able to understand how the energy works. See, it's it, it was difficult for me because I, like many people out there, am a media consumer, right? And so I go down so many rabbit holes. I was like, and this is part of the manifestation. I was like, I just want something that makes sense. I just want something that makes sense and, and that's ordered and structured and that will get me to where I, I desire to be. And that's exactly what that program did, uh, that does. And that's why, you know, I stepped into the role of coaching. And I, I hounded Kelly. I was like, I know this works. I am so passionate and excited about this course. I was like, let me teach it. I don't know how we're going to make that happen, but I know I can do it. And, and, and it, it and it's, I really did. And uh, it, it's because of that, though. I mean, like, by the time I was done with Welcome to Wu, I was already putting myself out there to do psychic readings, you know. And, and you know, like, the, the amount of change that happened in my life, you know. And it, honestly, it, it wasn't even so much about the magic for me. I mean, that just came naturally with the inner work and the way that it's layered into the program, right? Like, the understanding of energy, the learning how to pull my field in. I'm like, wow, I feel more like myself every single day. I was like, I'm not taking on everybody else's bullshit. I was like, what a wonderful place to be, <laughs> you know, all, all, of the, all of the things. And, you know, when, once I got to that space, I started seeing major changes in my life happen very rapidly. You know, the universe started aligning things, and it's, and I mean, like that's the reason I'm here today is because I I stepped into into that place um, into that program with Kelly and you know it's been a, it's been a beautiful process I can't say enough about it that's why I teach it because I I love sharing that experience with other people yeah and and you know the the thing that I hear most often about the Welcome to the Woo program is that people say that they came in feeling like one person and came out feeling like a different one and that the different one was more like them than they've ever been. Right. And, you know, one of the, the first exercise that you do in the program is called the red dot exercise. It's drawing the red dot at the bottom of your feet like we have on a map that says you are here. Right. And it's it's literally just a self-assessment talks to you. You know, it has you write down everything about different aspects of your life. And, you know, a lot of my students are like, well, why do I have to do this? <laughs> and I'm like, because it. One, it starts you into the process of self-inquiry, which is super important. Two, it takes everything in your life and puts it all together in one place and really crystallizes your discontent so that you can use that energy to move forward through the system. And then three is it sets a marker in the sand for you to look back on at the end of the program to see your progress because it is very easy to forget where you started. And the most most common thing that people say to me at the end of their second exercise of you know once they finish their second set of red dots and then going back and looked at the first is they go oh my god i can't even imagine thinking about the world that way i don't even remember being that person it was so it just feels like it was so long ago right and so you know this is the this is the function of that and so you know we we you know the outcome is guaranteed that you'll cut your stress levels in half or your money back right because Guaranteed, that's going to happen if you do the work in this program, okay? And then on top of that, you get the bonus of doing all the woo, which is, it, it's it's actually integral to the work. It's not really bonus. It's, it's integral. So, you know, if you don't learn how to adjust the way you hold your energy field, you're going to have a hard time feeling safe ever. If you don't learn how to protect yourself, protect your house, you're going to have a hard time feeling safe. You know, if you don't know how to talk to your guides, you're going to have a hard time feeling like you're not alone in the world. Like you can trust the universe because you don't know how to communicate with it. You know, there are all these ways in which we work with things. We even do basic divination. So, you know, you can start to, to do readings for yourself and to be able to talk to your guides and to learn to build your symbolic vocabulary, which is done through the cards, right? And the, why do we want our symbolic vocabulary? In case you missed that, the reason we want that is because the, the voice of spirit is symbology, right? And so if you can't speak symbology, then spirit will have a harder time communicating with you. And so 
for those of you out there who aren't in the program but want to build that, there's another way to start that process, and that is to start reading websites and books that talk about dream interpretation. Dream interpretation is all symbology. So if you want to build a symbology vocabulary, start reading that. You can also go back to the Spirit Sherpa podcast and listen to some of the mythology uh, series or uh, if you want those all put together for you, you can go over to spiritguideschool.com and click on the symbology and mythology button in the courses section, and it will give you an entire playlist of nothing but those episodes. Uh, and so we've got several things like that over there, and they're free to you. All you got to do is just sign up for them. Okay. Now, when you are doing your inner work and you are doing your magic, you will find that they will evolve together. Okay. And when you, what I find is that people will hit a bump, they'll hit a block in one and that will cause them to ultimately come to a screeching halt in the other. So, you know, people will be like, ah, I'm not going to do this anymore. And then they'll get like, you know, two or three, four, four steps further down the road and then they get stuck again on the other one. So this is why it is so important. And as you evolve them together, you will find that they naturally start to happen together. So initially we, we groove them simultaneously by doing the work together. But then ultimately things like your spontaneous Kundalini awakening last time that we talked about, those things start to happen. You're going through major stuff in your life and boom, your Kundalini awakens, right? And so that is the sort of thing that, that starts to happen around you and, and things will line up around you too. You'll get all sorts of messages that come through and common themes. Go ahead. And I had done some spell work around that the night before, like I said in the last episode, you know, like I had done a spell for some deeper level healing that needed to take place. And, uh, you know, when I stepped into this work, do I think I could have pulled that off? No. <laughs> you know, not, I'm not, not sure that I would have been ready for exactly what, what hit me either. You know, then again, eh, I, I get through things. Um, but that, that one might have been a little bit more debilitating. <laughs> I feel pretty good two weeks out. Yeah, I was going to say, getting through and and surviving are two different things. <laughs> or, well, getting through and, and navigating well are two different things is what I meant to say. Yeah, you, you know, surviving it is one thing. <laughs> navigating well is another. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've all done the I've survived it. I got through it. I, I'm a bloody mess, but... <laughs> because I'm a survivor you know? you know for the record I was really looking forward to the activation at the retreat um, you know not really a spontaneous one but you know spirit gives you what you can handle <laughs> we'll work with it it'll be fine so okay so anything else that you want to add you know no I think you said it all you know I mean like just this this program it changes lives you know like i mean go to the site read the testimonials watch the video testimonials i mean it, the the proof is in everybody that's came through this program and there is so much energy in the morphic field of this program i mean the 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 tra the oh. changes we're seeing in the students right now at this time taking this work it's it's you know, unparalleled to, to what it was before, you know, and, and the people are evolving at such a quick rate and also just being able to really hold it well. You know, it's, it's amazing to watch because that that field is growing and growing right now. And there's just so much healing energy and and love and, you know, support inside of it. Um, it's, it's it's really a beautiful tribe, you know. Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. I totally forgot that to mention it. But, you know, I started this program in 2017. And so it has been running for quite a long time and had quite a few people through it. And what you have to know about programs like this is that for each person who goes through the system in the same way, in the same group, you know, in the groupings, there's an energy, there's a morphic field that is developed around the group. And there, there's a thing called the gestalt, which is the energy of movement through that field. And when you have the energy of movement through the field that has so many people going through it over time, 
that energetic movement becomes grooved. And literally when you sign up, you step in and it just takes over and moves you through it. And we see that all the time because people will be like, this was, you said it to me the other day, you said I was doing, you know, X and, and I came back to the program and it was all about the same thing, right? It's like, it's, it's, there's a way in which the energy just grooves together and people will go through the same process together, even though they're in different stages of the program, because that's how the morphic field works on them, right? Is, is the morphic field is providing the holistic process while you're learning it linearly. And that's the really cool thing about coming into a program that's been grooved in this way and isn't changed and changed and changed and changed, right? Is gives you the opportunity to really step into and take advantage of all of the, the um, energy that has been built up by the people who came before you. So with that, I think we will call this good. If you are interested in the Welcome to the Woo program, Please check the link below in the, the show notes. I will also add in the link to the spiritual alchemy session. Hey, I remembered what it was called for if you get stuck and you need some help and, and <laughs> things aren't working and you can't get things gone. So, and I'll include that link and I'll include also the link to the, uh, we always include the link to the, the quiz on where are you in, you know, what is your shadow work readiness score, which will also tell you which program in our sequence that you would be right for. It's going to give you a lot of information about where you are too. So it's not just about our programs, but it will give you uh, exactly where you are in your process and what you need next. So with that, thank you for listening. Don't forget to like subscribe and share and rate. And I am still going to be doing drawings for the readings for the free readings. So you know, I'm, I'm really not liking doing the, the drawings for the free readings, uh, in terms of the videos of them. I'm not enjoying that. I'm like, Oh, I keep forgetting. I keep forgetting. I keep forgetting. So I won't be doing those <laughs> after I finish the, the, the eight that I, I require that I promised. And then the, the VIP day drawing, but I will still be doing drawings and I will still be bringing people on for free readings. So uh, I will identify those as we do the readings and we're going to be getting more people in doing more stuff for Fridays. So you're going to get to see some of, some of my coaches do their readings and, you know, maybe some other stuff that they do too. So that will be fun. All right. I'm chattering on, it is a distracted day. <laughs> <laughs> all over the place today i don't know but thank you for listening guys we will talk to you next time have a great one and don't forget that what you focus on expands what you intend is what you create so choose wisely so that's it for today's episode of spirit guides podcast head on over to itunes apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show every week one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on itunes will be entered into a drawing for a ten thousand dollar value grand prize and a private reading with kelly sparta herself be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Show